Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And first of all, let me say, I'm incredibly proud of this committee uh, has done its job uh, as far as producing legislation and uh, coming to agreement on it. And uh, I want to thank the chairman for uh, working uh, in a partnership. As always, the, the devil's in the details, and uh, I hope no one gets the idea that uh, we may have uh, uh, some uh, different views on uh, uh, how we handle this technology transfer, that somehow there's daylight between us. There really isn't. Uh, this is a, we're all on the same page here. Uh, and uh, so I uh, hope we can uh, move uh, forward in that regard. Uh, the pilot, uh, interestingly enough, uh, uh, you, you mentioned the pilot training of Chinese citizens. Uh, you know, we got the same problem, though. Even with our standards, we got the exact same problem. So uh, I, I don't, that's not a good example. There's other examples, but that's not a good one. The other thing I find ironic is that, uh, uh, and, and first of all, let me back up. You, you're aware that the that the uh, uh, other parties to the AUKUS agreement are groaning a bit at the United States insisting that, we, that they make certain changes in their uh, standards. Are, you're, you're aware of that, are you not? Um, Senator May, um, I start by just saying, I first of all want to go back to what you started with, which is that this committee's work really put us on a path to achieving all of our goals on AUKUS. And, um, as someone who worked on the committee, I know how much work goes into that, both by you and your staffs, and just to thank you again for that. Um, I actually will say I was just in Australia with both our Secretary of State, our Secretary of Defense, and their equivalents, and across the board, we heard broad support for what we are doing together. Um, I have to tell you, I spend a lot of time meeting with other countries, and it was possibly one of the most positive meetings um, I've ever participated in. I think the Australians, um, and again, uh, they of course can speak for themselves, but I think they're very committed to Pillar 2 in particular on how we can look at the comparable advantages that may, they may have, for example, in production as, uh, of certain items as they work with our defense industrial base. So really the conversation that I participated in was about how do we take advantage, how do we bring our um, companies and our research institutions together to work on Pillar 2. Well, I, I, first of all, let me say that my experience in talking with them both the Australians uh, and the Brits, uh, is the same as yours. Uh, they're, uh, they're, it's incredibly positive. Uh, certainly, uh, you don't always agree on everything, but uh, everyone's uh, rolling up their sleeves and committed to get this done and to, to reach the middle ground we need to, uh, to get there. It's a little ironic uh, that we are beating the drum about uh, a higher uh, or different regulatory changes uh, when, in fact, uh, we're the ones that have actually been the victim of, uh, of Chinese uh, thefts and uh, uh, espionage and what have you, whereas I'm not aware of any of publicly reported instances of the same thing happening to the Australians uh, uh, or, or the Brits. Am, am, is that an accurate statement? Uh, um, let me share what I'm aware of. I actually think um, because we have our laws in place, we're actually able to prosecute the uh, Chinese, the, the, those who are training the Chinese pilots. And um, while I was in Australia, I did learn that an Australian pilot uh, also participated. Um, and we're uh, looking to extradite that pilot here under our laws um, to deal with that issue. Um, but again, these kinds of issues, that's really an illustrative example, um, but certainly not the only one. I'm concerned also about what we uh, what we talk about are the known unknowns, the other ways that we may see those kinds of challenges coming forward. And I agree with that. And, I, and none of this is existential to uh, uh, the uh, failure of, the, uh, of this program. I mean, these are things that we can work through. They're, uh, they're, they're things that we can and should work through. On ATEM itself, um, I, I would really hope uh, that uh, you don't view ATEM as being a solution to the problem. It's temporary. And, uh, and it, there's got to be more to it than that. So number one, we need to get it finalized. Fair enough? Sir, um, I agree with you. The, um, the purpose of ATEM is to be an interim measure so that we have something in place while the legislative process uh, is being uh, completed. And so I um, absolutely uh, agree that we will um, continue to work on ATEM. I think that um, for those of you who aren't um, 
living in the world of uh, State Department acronyms. Um, this is uh, our interim measure um, that we're working on while we're waiting uh, for the AUKUS legislation to pass. And I think the good news is a lot of the work that we're doing um, to put this interim measure together will also be helpful, um, hopefully, um, when the final legislation is passed. Uh, I, I appreciate that, and again, I would urge that uh, the finalization be given a very high priority and get there as quickly as you can, and also have everyone understand that this is only interim because it's going to take more uh, than this. And uh, with that, uh, my time's up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh,